my name is Polly Cody. Um, I am a um, fourth generation native of Milford, New Hampshire. Uh, great grandmother Kate and uh, great grandfather Al Zafin came to Milford in 1877 from Francistown. Um, in the 1900s, um, of course, we were, we were still in the horse and buggy days. Uh, automobiles didn't come to Milford uh, probably till maybe 1901, 1902. So um, everything that went on in Milford was always uh, horse and buggy. Um, the roads were not macadamized around the Oval until after 1900. So um, with the lumber mills, Shepherd's Mill and the lumber mill on Great Brook, um, and all of the horse and buggies going around the oval. It was a very, very dusty community with a lot of dust being brought up in the roads. They did have a water tank that they would fill with um, lots of water and sprinkle it around the town, around the oval, to keep the dust down. But um, still, it didn't always do the job. The trains came to Milford around 1850 and there were actually, there were two train stations, the one at Garden Street across from the police station and the one on South Street called the Fitchburg Line and you could get on either one of those trains and you could travel to Boston or uh, once you got to Boston you could travel just about any place in the country that you wanted to and um, there were a lot of people who, uh, who would take the, the daily train. They probably came into town um, seven or eight times a day. There was a train leaving to go to Boston. So people were able to get out of town and travel um, around the countryside and, uh, and visit relatives. Kate writes about um, traveling out to Iowa, Stacyville, Iowa, to see her brother. And uh, this would have been in 1868, I believe. And they, um, they had to go to Nashua, take the horse and buggy to Nashua. And then they got on the train to Boston. And then from Boston, it's almost the same exact route that you would follow today if you were head out to, say, Chicago. Um, out to Albany, Buffalo, and across, and um, it was quite an adventure for her and her two little boys at the time. And they went through Canada and got into, I think it was Minnesota, and then it was stagecoach from, uh, from the train there to her brother's house in Stacyville, Iowa. And again, because there was um, a chance of her never seeing her brother again. They stayed for three months in the summertime and had a wonderful visit and then came home on the train. And um, sometimes we think that, um, that people were absolutely isolated, but they really weren't. Um, if you lived out um, on a farm, say in New Boston, you might be isolated, but if you could get into from New Boston to Manchester, on the stagecoach, you could end up traveling the whole country. Entertainment uh, in Milford in those days, there were a lot of civic, or civic organizations, um, the Odd Fellows and um, different ones that, that would put on entertainment. Sometimes they were plays and uh, different things going on at Town Hall. And this was about all they had for entertainment other than um, visiting family, which was very, very important to everybody. And when, um, when they visited family, uh, especially if they were out of town in uh, Francistown, Hillsboro, um, New Boston, wherever they went, um, it was never for an afternoon. It was always for two to three weeks at a time that they would go visit because they never knew when they would see each other again. And it was very important for them to keep this family contact. Um, a horse and buggy ride from uh, Milford to say New Boston was um, about two hours. 
and uh, Kate writes in her diary at one time that they had a, um, a horse from the livery stable who would not drive and from Milford to New Boston took seven hours. It was an all-day trip because the horse gave them such a hard time. But um, other, than, other than seeing plays in town and, and visiting family, maybe they might get together for an evening of playing cards or um, something like that, um, there really wasn't too much going on. They did have band concerts uh, before 1900, um, but other than that, there wasn't too much entertainment. Milford was um, uh, quite an abolitionist town. Frederick Douglass came to Milford, visited with the Hutchison family uh, when Eagle Hall was still in the middle of the Oval. So we're talking about 1840s, 1850s, and there, were, uh, there still are a lot of houses in Milford that were part of the Underground Railroad. And there were some on High Street, the Humphrey Moore House on Elm Street. Um, back probably before the 1900s at the corner of Sohegan and Amherst Street, there was a large building there that was part of the Underground Railroad. So uh, Milford always uh, was a, uh, a great abolitionist town. I am pretty sure that uh, my great uncle Charles, Kate's son, took uh, a number of pictures. And I think it was around 1903. And um, I have not ever found what civic group put the play on. But um, it was in town hall and um, all of the people in the play were natives of Milford. Um, when you look at the picture that uh, will be on the website, um, you will see all of the names of everybody in the play. And um, Heald is one of the names, Hall is one of the names. Uh, my grandfather, George Langdell, was in the play. And um, as you research your own family history, you might find some of your family ancestors were in that play.